In this video, we're going to learn how we can write our own modules that we can then import in JupyterLab. So this video is a bit different in that we are going to um, use a new notebook file. So let's rename it um, and call it local modules, because that's what uh, they are called in the Python world. However, now we also have to do something else. So to do that, let's uh, create a new launcher by clicking on the plus here and go down here. And for now, let's go ahead and click on text file here to create a new text file. And now we are going to rename it into sample underscore module dot pi. Okay, we don't leave the txt for text file, but we, we rename it into dot pi. And so now what we are going to do is we are going to write our first uh, Python module that is a file a .py file that only contains Python code, and then we can do something with it. For example, import it. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, first write a doc string. So we remember doc strings from writing functions. However, we can also use doc strings to document what is the content um, inside a module. So for example, let's write here utilities for finding statistics. Okay, that is a subject line and technically speaking, we could go ahead and simply write blah, blah, blah for further documentation. Okay, so that is uh, a doc string, just like a doc string for a function, but now this is at the beginning of a .py file and therefore we call it the module, a doc string. So a .py file is also referred to as a module. So let's uh, continue. And now what you're going to do is, we are going to write one function in there and that is going to be uh, the function that uh, we have already developed a couple of times in different variants throughout this vid video lectures. And it's the function that takes um, some list as an argument and then uh, gives back the average of the even numbers in the list. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, define a function called average evens. And it takes uh, two parameters. So the first one will be numbers. And the second one, and we put that behind the asterisk here, we call scalar and give it a default value of one. So we want to be able to scale the average um, after it has been uh, calculated. Then we go ahead and write colon and then comes the doc string for the function. So let's write here, calculate the average of all even numbers. Let's go ahead and write um, Let's specify as the in the arc, arcs section here the parameters the function has. So let's first write numbers, and in parentheses we will mention that it's going to be a list of integers, and these are the whole numbers to be averaged. Let's then go ahead and uh, also specify the second parameter here, scalar. Um, Generically speaking, it should be a float or an int, but we can see a float as a generalization of an int in a way. And so this is basically the number that multiplies the average. Okay, and now the function is going to return, so returns um, the scaled average, and that is going to be a float. So um, let's quickly um, uh, re remember um, how we uh, wrote the function. So we are going to use a list comprehension. We are going to write n for n in numbers if n modulo divided by 2 has no rest. And this uh, will create a new list object that lives only inside the function object as it is being executed. And we assign that to a local variable, which we call events. And then in the next line, we go ahead and we will say average is the sum of the evens divided by the number of the even numbers, so the length of the evens list. And then in the last step, we are going to return um, the scalar, the product of scalar times average. Okay, and now I go ahead and I simply say control S. And uh, now I have a defined a function object. For didactical purposes, I will simply go ahead and above the function, 
we will write, we will call the print function and we will simply write in there the text module is imported. And you will see in a bit uh, why I do that. Okay, so we will simply put that in. In a real world project, you would not do that, but this is just now to illustrate a point. So that is our first example in this course of a module that we um, created. And now let's go back to our notebook file. And um, on the left-hand side here, we see that here it is, we have the, let me maybe extend this a bit. We have the local modules.ipy and b file here. And down here we have the sample module.py um, file. So uh, um, see how both are in the same uh, path. That is kind of important. And um, so let's continue here. So maybe um, you are interested in to know uh, at some points in which um, in which path is my current notebook in. So this is the so-called um, yeah active path or the, the working directory it's sometimes called. There is a utility um, that is called p wd print working directory and since this is not python code we have to um, start that with an exclamation mark just like when we use pip so when i say uh, pwd this tells me the folder into which in which i am currently um, as i execute this file here okay so this is just in case that uh, on your machine when you try this out you may um, this may not work and one of the most likely reasons for why what i'm going to show you in uh, in a bit it's not going to work on your machine is because either these files are in different folders or maybe they are in the same folder but for whatever reason the active working directory of the open um, notebook file is not the one where the file is in but that's just uh, to illustrate um, how we can look up the current directory so now Let's go ahead and let's simply write import sample underscore module, which is the, the name of the sample underscore module dot pi file. However, we are not going to write the dot pi. So the dot pi is basically uh, will be added by Python um, automatically. And now so that, so that we don't have to type that much, we will simply go ahead and write, we import that sample module as mod. Okay, let's execute this. And we see below the, um, below the line here, it says module is imported. And usually when uh, you uh, write a module, you don't want to have any code uh, do something in the global level here, in the global namespace. The only thing that you do in a module is usually you either define um, um, functions. You may also want to define a couple of constants, just like in the math module that we saw previously. Um, but also you may define some other things for uh, most notably so-called classes, which we will look into um, in a later um, video. But usually code like this that is just executed, you don't usually put into a module. However, since we did, we see that um, once we import the module, this line here is simply executed. So in other words, the code inside the .py file, inside the module is executed just as if we copy pasted the code in here into a code cell. Okay. However, now note one important thing. If I go ahead and execute this cell again, we don't see the output again. Okay. And the reason is because Python for optimization purposes will not reload modules again, a second time or a third time that it has already loaded in or imported. So in other words, if I now go ahead and I make any changes here in the .py file here, I am not going to see them. Okay, so if, for example, I add three axes here and I save this file and I go back, I, I, have, no, I have no chance um, to get to these uh, changes. So what I could do then is I could go ahead and I could say kernel, restart kernel and clear the outputs and now go ahead and do it again and now we see the access so only the first time we execute um, or we import a certain module it is actually executed okay so that is a, a source of confusion uh, for beginners so let's go uh, back and maybe simply get rid of uh, this file here uh, of, of, or this line here because this is really just uh, for illustrating uh, that the file the .py file is only executed once okay now that we have executed uh, the import statement and imported the module what we can do is 
we can go ahead and call the built-in help function and pass it the mod uh, variable. And now we simply get a help message that is derived, as we see, from our module doc string. So here it says the name of the module is sample module, which is just the name of the file, really. And then it says utilities for finding statistics, right? And that is basically what we put into the subject line of the doc string. And then under description, it says blah, blah, blah. So anything that comes after the first empty line will uh, be put here in the help message. So that is how we can influence the help message. And then it says the function, there are functions defined and the function uh, is shown here. The so-called signature is shown. So the parameters the function takes and so on. And also the entire function doc string is being shown here. And then lastly, um, the help message uh, tells us in which file on my hard disk um, this um, code lives, so to say. Similarly, we could, instead of using the help function, we could uh, simply use the dir function. And this will give us a list of uh, names that exist inside the module. And for now, we have been always been ignoring uh, the ones that start with a double underscore. This is Python internals. But we see here that there is a thing called average events. And technically speaking, at this point, we don't know what it is, but with the help message we just saw previously, we know that this is a function. So now what we could do is we could go ahead and say mod dot. So we use the dot, um, the dot operator, the attribute access operator, and let's access the average events function. And let's simply go ahead for now. Let's simply evaluate this so we can get a reference to this function. And we see that the function is in the sample module. And now what we could do is, of course, we can call the function as we called our own functions um, many times before. And let's now simply go ahead and create a new list object on the fly, which is 40, 41, 42, 43, and 44. We have seen this example before, and we get back as the result 42.0, just as we would expect. So when would you do that? So um, a best practice for me is that when I work um, in uh, data science projects, I usually uh, put all the code that I need um, or that I write and that I want to reuse in several notebook files, I put that into .py files, okay? And then I package that code uh, into like real .py files. And uh, one, uh, what we didn't see here in this example is you can always, you can also um, uh, split your code across many, many .py, .py files and make them dependent on each other. That is called packaging. So um, you can organize your code in simply with simple .py files. It has a couple of advantages. First of all, let's uh, maybe, maybe go to the GitHub page um, for this course. So if we go into um, chapter 02 functions, that's the chapter from which this content is taken. Here we see another file called sample module.py. And this has a bit more code in it and also longer description. But at the end of the day, this is a longer example of the same concept. And we see that in GitHub, um, GitHub already knows how to format everything correctly. So the text here, the doc string is formatted in one color and uh, the Python code is formatted in different colors and so on. And uh, so we can use uh, tools like Git and also uh, Git, GitHub and also Git, of course, um, the, the utility to manage uh, this here. Uh, to organize .py files and to manage them. And uh, that, that is a big advantage of putting code into .py files. And also, we can now simply go ahead and create another module, an another notebook file. Let's uh, just uh, keep it as untitled. And also here, we could say import sample module. And uh, then we can say sample module and, um, for example, also call the help function here. Okay, so we can reuse the same code from one file in several notebook files. And that is usually what you want to do. You never ever want to copy paste code from file to file. That is always a best practice. And whenever you find yourself copy pasting code, uh, then usually there is a better way uh, to do it. So um, therefore, um, one thing to know is um, we use .py files to reuse code across uh, several notebooks and also possibly across several projects. So maybe there's nothing that uh, would prevent you from um, or from storing the Py files on some server, let's say GitHub, for example, and then on different in different projects, you um, can uh, include your own uh, code that uh, you uh, de defined once. Okay, so that's the idea of a so-called local module. And again, this is 
nothing but um, a simple .py file that lives in the same folder um, than the uh, notebook file. It could also live, of course, in a different folder, but then we would have to um, switch folders here in the, in the notebook file. We're not going to do that here, but uh, that is an easy example here of how we can um, modularize a code into uh, .py files. Okay, so um, that is it um, for this video. That is also um, the last video uh, regarding uh, chapter two in the book. And then we will continue with chapter three on conditional. So I see you soon.